Hey everyone, in this video I want to present to you the completely new system for RPG Builder 1.1 that will be for anything related to combat animations, particles and things like that. As you can see here, I'm casting the fireball, but before it's actually casted, so while casting, I'm actually having those kind of fire particles um, attached to my hands, right? None of this was possible before. You can even push it, of course, a lot further than this. I just wanted to uh, show you a basic example for this video. But um, yeah, pretty much I'm going to explain to you how this is going to work. It is very easy. And uh, what I did is that I, could, I completely got rid of the um, Combat Visual Prefab workflow. So if you are familiar with RPG Builder and you created your own spell effects and animations, you had to create prefabs for that. And I was not satisfied with this workflow. I think it's very slow and just not efficient in general. It's just adding a lot of extra steps and um, extra um cases where you can actually make mistakes or whatever now as you can see it is directly inside the editor so we are looking at the ability module right now and we no longer have the kind of like visual section that we had before with just like a slot for the combat visual prefab now we have all this data directly in the editor and a lot more control over it so here it is split in two. We have visual effect, visual animations. If you look at visual effect, you can of course add as many as you want. And each of those effects are going to be independent for this ability. And they can of course be triggered at many different times during the use of this ability. So here you have the full list, which is activate, such as the fire particles I just showed. So as soon as we use the fireball ability, we now have some fire particles on our hands while casting. But it can of course also be used on cast completed, completed. So this is like completed no matter what happened, no cast needed or whatever, interrupted and cancelled. So that's pretty cool. And here you see that we have two, um, two of those set up, right? And um, we have fire muzzle, fire muzzle, so two times the same. But you see that here we also have a socket name field. More on that in a future video because that's that's going to be a video on its own, but basically that's what's allowing to now in RPG Builder uh, have control over where those effects are spawned exactly and no longer just inside your character or whatever. So if you pay attention, like if I pause, we see that, um, let me find the player, we see that the fire is actually on the hand or rather like, you know, attached to the hand of the character. Anyway, so um, let's go back to that here. Um, so we also have um, option for sounds and the duration of those effects. Now, we also have the same kind of things for animations, of course, with their own settings because they don't use the same things, but they can also be triggered at any moment of the ability, just like effects. And now we have support for any um, parameter type for the animation. So bool, int, float, and triggers. Then you just have your parameter name and the delay at which you want these animations to be played. Of course, the options you have here are going to depend based on the parameter type. So bool, we can set if it's going to be set to true or false. The duration after which it will be reset, int, float, and trigger. And here you can add as many as you want and they will work independently. Cool. So uh, that's pretty much, you know, the entire new way of creating that. It is, of course, also now also ported to um, effects. So effects just uh, like abilities can have their own animations and effects, uh, or rather, you know, particle effects in this case, but the animation is of course going to be played not on the caster, but rather on the uh, combat node, which is hit by this effect. So if you deal damage, for example, if we look here at the fireball damage, here you see that we have hit fireball prefab um, attached to it. So that is going to play, you know, the kind of fire hits effect on the target when we hit it with a uh, fireball. These prefabs, by the way, um, so for example, if I go back to the fireball, nothing like before, nothing like the combat visual prefab. If I look at it in the project here, let me go and see in view, you will see that it's just a normal particle prefab. So um, this has no component on it. It's literally just particles. 
that's it. So you simply drag and drop this here and everything else is going to be taken care of. You even have option for the scale. Um, in this case, for example, I could set it to one if you want, if we, if I wanted to and um, save it. And now they will be, you know, they will both be much bigger. And um, yeah, of course, this, the scale is only going to affect the particle if your particle is going to be um, set to scaling mode hierarchy. Anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show. Uh, concerning, you know, the update process, you will lose your um, data, but the combat visual prefabs are still going to be existing in your project, right? So this is not going to be lost. So you can simply um, take a look at it. For example, I will go here under combat logic and I could simply go here for example here I have all the ones I had in the demo and here you can just have you know your effect and whatever information you had this but this just has a lot more um, control over it now anyway that's pretty much all I wanted to show for this video um, I'm going to make more videos in the future uh, creating ability from scratch so um, we will go together through the process of actually creating those right away but yeah now um, i'm going to make a video also about the not socket system which is pretty cool so see you in the next one